Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco. Coming up, a new Jack Wolf knife is on the prowl. Cold Steel gives AD10 the light treatment and 10 great utility folders. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week was on the unboxing of the new Jack Wolf Knives, uh, uh, Midnight Jack. And Patty's Potato Peelers, my good buddy, said, uh, great first look. Them kids are fun. Give them your stickers, Stingy Dad, LOL. And the funny thing is, is... Uh, uh, my daughter walked in halfway through my unboxing of the Jack Wolf Knives uh, Midnight Jack. And as you know, each knife comes with a sticker and a bunch of other cool swag. And my daughter's immediate reaction upon seeing the very cool sticker was, can I have it? And my immediate reaction was no, like because I knew she was going to ask that. And, and uh, Patty's like, you know, give her the damn sticker, Bob. Don't be so stingy. But the funny thing is, is she takes all of my cool stickers. So not this one, Eden, not this one. All right, so uh, let's do a pocket check here. Um, as you know, in my state of Virginia, we can now buy, carry, own, sell, and manufacture uh, automatic knives as of July 1st, thanks to Doug Ritter and Knife Rights. And so I've been carrying my automatic knives, and I may have, may have just ordered one, a new one, just as a celebratory uh, gesture. It's kind of the right thing to do. Uh, but I've been carrying today my Protec TR3, and this is just such a cool and classic uh, out the side automatic knife from Protec. I really fell in love with this knife uh, when I saw a video of someone who served overseas and he had one of these in the fish scale pattern, which is really cool, uh, which is what I wanted to get initially, but I've really grown to love this grooved pattern. It's great for gription. Uh, but any case, in any case, in that video, the guy was saying he lost his uh, Protec TR3 in the sand, and it was lost for about six months. He found it <clears throat> with a whole bunch of really, really fine sand, that had gotten into the works. I mean, the thing was buried and just by chance he found it and uh, he opened it up and immediately it worked. So, you know, that sold me. Uh, not that I needed to be sold. I've always liked ProTech, uh, but just to hear someone tell a story about a certain knife uh, when in use, uh, it sells it for me. So this is the TR3 SWAT edition, meaning it's all black. Uh, there's an operator edition that has a little bit of tritium in the handle. I mean, in the uh, button there. And uh, I'm not, I can't remember what the milling and the scale is for that, but just a great knife, a great EDC knife. This is about a 3.4 inch blade, 154 CM, which I love. Uh, and ProTech uses a lot. Um, great classic all around kind of Kind of military looking. Uh, I do like that too. It looks a, a little bit like a piece of military kit. So love that knife. Okay. Uh, also on me today was the Hogtooth Knives Tonto. I love this knife. I carry it a lot. Uh, this is great for summer carry because it's small and discreet, uh, yet it has, well, and a great sheath. That's why I always show it. Uh, but it has a, a great size. That's a three and a half inch hollow ground Tonto blade. That's also 154 cm, but uh, that handle is perfect because I can get four fingers on it, but it's small enough that the pommel does not extend up very far. So I can wear this. Yesterday I was wearing this, wearing this in my uh, in the waistband of my favorite pair of shorts, which are um, they're like they're surf shorts. I'm by no means a surfer, but you can kind of wear them as shorts. They look good as like shorts, but you can also wear them as bathing suits. And it's super light material that dries really quickly. And, you know, not the kind of material that you would expect would hold up uh, a, a substantial knife. And uh, this works great in that kind of, you know, that kind of garment. Plus that short handle does not poke into the, uh, into the rib cage when when I sit down to drive and it doesn't uh, 
interrupt my shrinking uh, spare tire. I, I will proudly say it is shrinking, but it's still there. Um, so great knife. I love that thing. Uh, that was a, that's a relatively custom thing. He'll, he'll have a, a few blanks cut out and make a few of them at a time. He also does a worn cliff, just an awesome knife, um, handmade, uh, for a very reasonable price. Now he, he can, he can go very unreasonable, um, which he's about to do for my mother. Shh. I don't, she doesn't listen to this show, so it's all good. Uh, but, uh, yeah, great, great, great knife maker is Matt Chase of Hogtooth Knives. Okay, my emotional support knife of the day was the uh, Petrified Fish Victor. I absolutely love this thing. It is beautiful. I haven't used it, I don't think, for a darn thing. Uh, but that's K110 blade steel, which, if you don't know, is like D2. It's got a very beautiful, uh, lustrous satin satin finish on it uh, it is a fingerprint magnet as they say but it's a flipper so hopefully you don't really have to get your fingers on it much cool thing about it is when you flip it over uh, for lefties they have a thumb slot for righties they have a middle finger flicking slot cut into the blade um, I just think it's a very attractive Bowie blade I got this when I was searching for the beluga the petrified fish beluga and and i saw this and it was new at the time and i i just had to have that that blade shape you know i love a bowie and a very nicely done but just a guillotine for sure so smooth man these uh petrified fish knives are awesome um and that k110 steel like i said i have i have not really used it but if it is well heat treated <laughs> which i hear they heat treat their steels well, if, if it is like D2 and well, he treated, no doubt it is extremely capable. But like I said, this was just my emotional support knife today, meaning uh, the one I had on me to flip while I was working. And uh, I do that a lot. Uh, some some emotional support knives from the week have been the Senkut Bronte. A great one because it's a front flipper and it started out oddly stiff for a Senkut slash Civivi slash Wii Umbrella knife it was very stiff actually but i've broken it in nicely and i i really enjoy this knife love the shape another emotional support knife this week was the old uh, uh tr2 you know why not have a couple automatics on you now that they're legal i just have to be careful of the double edged like i don't think this is legal <laughs> because of that double edge uh so i'll i'll i will keep the daggers in the safe for now but uh, yeah, and then I had one more emotional support knife. This was the at home uh, emotional support knife, the um, Lynn Thompson edition Chris XL tie light. So again, just something I had on me just to enjoy and to flip and to and to uh, you know uh, brace myself against the wickedness of the world. Um, so. There you go. That's what I had in my pocket check this week. What did you get? What have you been carrying? Let me know. What's your favorite? Have you guys gotten the Victor? Have you gotten this knife? It is a really, really, uh, I, I, if you're going to get one petrified fish, uh, I would say the Beluga or the Victor. Uh, those are the, I have experienced a number of them, but those are the two that I've been the most impressed with. They're all good knives though, quality wise. So I, it's a matter of the design. All right. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, why not check us out on Patreon? Uh, and let me just tell you one quick thing. Uh, you get some exclusive content, the stuff I like the best, are the interview extras. It's kind of like off the record stuff uh, from the interviews I do with knife makers, etc. And then you get entered into a, a monthly knife giveaway if you're at a certain tier of support and uh, stickers, other kind of stuff, bragging rights for sure. And it looks like I'm going to have uh, another exclusive bit of content coming up here uh, with my buddy, uh, Ian Lewis, who is a, a, a martial arts extraordinaire. And uh, well, just check it out. Go over to uh, Patreon. You can either zap the QR code over there or you can go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon again. That's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Looking for new knife? How about one from Benchmade, Spiderco, Wii, or Bark River? Get that new knife and support the Knife Junkie channel, and save money on a new knife all at the same time. Visit our Knives for Sale page at www.thenifejunkie.com slash knives for this week's specials. 
Through our affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on great knives. You save some money on your knife purchase, and the Knife Junkie channel makes a small commission, it's a win-win. Check out the new knife specials each and every week at www.thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast, and now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So, you know, Cold Steel is one of my absolute favorite knives. Oh. One of uh, knife companies, one of my absolute favorite knives from them is uh, designed by Andrew Demko. Surprise, surprise. Well, yeah, a whole lot of them are designed by him, but the 8010 was a custom Demko knife for years until Cold Steel. Uh, licensed it and started producing it. And man, did they do a, a fantastic job. Um, by all accounts, even Andrew Demko says they have virtually made his knife, um, you know, the, the best production version of his custom knife they could have. And I love mine. I got in on the very first drop when they first came out and got the hollow ground um, S35 VN. And uh, I love the hollow ground aspect of it. Or no, no, uh, that one's the XHP. I believe my uh, my 15 was the 35. Uh, but in any case, um, I got the hollow ground. Uh, now they're coming out with, uh, but but the price kept creeping up. When it first came out, it was like 110 bucks. Price kept creeping up. Now it's uh, way north of 150. But they're coming out with the light version. This is with OS 10. And GRN, you got that molded uh, GRN handle and OS 10. The OS 10, by all accounts, and from what I know uh, from my um, a couple of the OS 10 knives I have here, um, like the Voyager I just got, the Drop Point XL, uh, that OS 10 is really good. I mean, I, I was hacking around with uh, uh, saplings and vines and stuff like that, and and it, it was great. Uh, so OS 10, if you don't want to spend a whole lot of money, is a great blade steel to get. Now, uh, the handle is still that contoured, uh, textured handle, but instead of G10, it's the GRN. They do it great. I think they call it, I know they call it Grivery. Uh, I'm not sure if they still call it Grivery now that they're under GSM. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, but that's an aluminum backspacer uh, that equals a little uh, uh, glass breakery sort of point. I'm actually not sure if you can break glass with it, uh, but it also gives you a lanyard hole. And of course, the world famous and ultra stout triad lock. You know, uh, before the triad lock ever came to be, now the triad lock takes a, a traditional back lock and between the uh, blade tang and the lock interface, it puts a stop pin and, uh, and a deeper notch in the tang of the blade so that as the... Uh, knife gets used, it breaks in further, 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 and further, but all of the uh, force on the blade is transferred to the stop pin and into the frame of the handle and not into the lock bar. Um, even before that, and that's what makes the triad lock so incredibly strong, even before that, just a regular traditional, say, Delica or, or anything, or Buck 110, the back lock is an extremely strong uh, mechanism. So it's now you've got this uh, ultra, ultra strong folder in the 8010. You got the styling of that custom knife uh, with just the only difference is the materials are of a less luxurious grade. And do we need that luxury? Many of us don't, especially if they're getting the 8010 as a work knife. And this makes a fantastic work knife. You can hold it in your hand all day long and, and cut hard with it. And it's so comfortable. Um, just a great knife. So it's good to see that they're giving it the light treatment as they did uh, the Formax and as they did the um, SRK uh, folding SR1, I mean, is what it's called, SR1. So it's a great uh, little trend to see them uh, going through. But but don't get rid of the good, the, uh, the premium models, cold steel. Okay, next up, Kaiser has a really cool knife coming out. I wish it were larger. Maybe I'm happy it's not larger. Uh, but it's called The Comet, and it's by uh, a graphic designer who has done a lot of stickers and logos in the knife industry. Uh, but this is his first design, and it's being made by uh, Kaiser. I think it's a really good-looking knife. I got to say, uh, my initial impression was it does remind me of a Will Moon uh, design uh, for what whatever that's worth. That's just... but. 
but I wouldn't say it's derivative or or a copy or anything like that. It just it just is in the same universe to me, design wise. Uh, and uh, I really like the look of this blade. It's got a pretty dramatic swedge. It's under three inches, which uh, means I don't have to buy it, but it might be a nice one to buy just because it's really cool looking. Uh, comes in a denim pouch and uh, well, the blue denim version of it does. Uh, but it has brass bolsters and micarta 154 cm. I love 154 cm, and it's going to keep it uh, below a uh, hundred bucks, which is a great deal. So uh, 3.14 ounces, 90 bucks denim, stylish design. I think um, really nice looking blade. And and uh, as mentioned in knife news, a dramatic swedge. The swedge is has a cool kind of swooping uh, motion that you can sort of see if you look closely in the other photograph. But it, it's just something to check out for sure. And I love Kaiser. They've just been absolutely crushing it and uh, look forward to seeing this. Now, yeah, yeah, thank you, Jim. As you can see that swedge on the top forward of the, you know, right by the point has a nice swoop down into the main bevel. And I really, I like that. And obviously, so does Ben Schwartz. All right, that's it for Life Knife News. I am looking forward to uh, checking out all those new knives. Uh, when they come my way, like that Kaiser Comet, who knows? I don't need the 8010 because I have the heavy model, uh, but love to see that they've come out with that. All right, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at the new Jack Wolf Midnight Jack. And then inspired by the blade of that knife, we're going to take a look at 10 great utility folders coming up on the knife. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. All right. So this week I got uh, the Jack Wolf Knife Midnight Jack. Thank you, Ben Belkin. He sent out uh, these to a number of YouTubers and reviewers and I, I I don't have to speak for us all, but I know I speak for us all when we say thank you. These are incredible. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Uh, the Midnight Jack, it came in the usual packaging, and dag nabbit, as always, I've already put it away. Uh, and uh, I should have pulled it out, but it has all the usual. It has the pog. It has the beautiful um, uh, artwork. This time, it's a, a wolf. <sighs> screaming in the dark with the moon behind him it's pretty cool looks like a dog man or a wolf man and um midnight midnight jack purple theme uh the color uh, the color theme of the whole motif of the pog the sticker all of the artwork it's purple and incidentally or not incidentally uh on theme is the uh is the carbon fiber which looks amazing it's purple it's a uh, purple fat carbon looks incredible. Okay. So this one is now they all come in either. They, they come in three different micartas and carbon fiber, a, a fancy, fancy carbon fiber, not your uh, grandpa's carbon fiber. And, uh, and then either natural tan, uh, olive drab or black micarta. This one is the green. Now I show it with this because this is the beautiful leather slip that every, jack wolf knife comes with and this is the one for this one but look at this this is called a coffin handle barlow now coffin handle because of the shape it's very evocative uh, of like a coffin handled bowie um and uh i'm sure that uh, there is a history of coffin handled slip joints i just always think of the bowie when i see the coffin handles i love the shape of this uh, very neutral um, but squared off and kind of dramatic uh the barlow aspect you see in that extra long bolster uh, most of the time you'll see a bolster uh from a knife uh, from a knife a bolster on a knife going to about there don't worry i'm not touching it going to about there and uh a Barlow is a working man's knife. It's a hard working knife. So they made they make bolsters on Barlow's much longer to give sort of that to give extra um, torsional rigidity or back and forth strength and uh, or torsion is I guess is twisting. Right. So it gives it a lot of lateral and torsional rigidity with that extra long um, uh, 
bolster. And then that also makes uh, an extra long tang. And so the extra long tang fitting into the extra long bolster uh, just makes it a more solid work knife. Look at this breathtaking sheep's foot blade. It is just astounding. It is so beautiful. Um, why do you say so, Bob? Well, it's it's a perfect utility shape. You've got that nice uh, uh, straight edge, very straight edge, but it comes down at the same angle that the handle comes down with a straight spine. So it presents a cutting angle uh, that it accelerates the cut. If you if you see what I mean there, you can see the way the cutting edge is angled down because the blade widens towards the tip. That means I'm going to get almost a, a, a recurve action as I go in there. It's not recurve, but it's drawing the material in uh, because it's a straight edge, but it's presented at an angle downward. It's fully, fully flat, uh, fully hollow ground, meaning that grind doesn't stop until the spine. It's a it's a perfectly hollow ground blade. And it's M390, that really nice looking swedge and a long pull, that long pull right here. Mm, mm, mm. And then you've got incredible walk and talk. I'm going to put it in front of my mic so you can hear it. <clears throat> this of the four Jack Wolf knives that are out uh, strikes me as the hardest worker. Perhaps that's because it's the biggest. It feels the largest in hand. And with that blade, that is a 100% bona fide utility blade shape. Uh, and when I think of a blade, uh, like a utility blade, what I'm thinking of is something that is good for draw cuts where you're using that tip and you're doing precise sort of uh, cuts or uh, slicing open boxes or something like that, or say you're cutting out something detailed in paper, um, or, or you're just using that tip, uh, but also a good utility knife, you can push cut, push through, say, cardboard, uh, and it's not going to slip off the top. Like if you have something that is an upswept, has an upswept edge, you, you're only going to be able to cut for so long before that tip is going to slip out of the material you're cutting. Well, with that straight edge and now with that slightly downward presentation of that edge, you basically can uh, push cut with this and kind of trap the material in this little triangle uh, Triangle here. I'm not talking about that notch. I'm just talking about the, the area right in here in that cutting area. I'll demonstrate in a second on a piece of cardboard. Uh, so you've got your Jack Wolf knives. You've got a triple fluting on that long um, bolster, which is beautiful, beautiful, beautifully done. Uh, that is blasted titanium. The bolster and the liner are integral. That's all one piece on both sides. Uh, in other words, uh, on most traditional knives, the bolster is um, is attached to the liner. Well, this is all just one with a notch cut out for the cover. The canvas micarta is just feels great in hand. I put a little oil on it because I wanted a little bit more contrast. Um, the, the raw green canvas micarta kind of looked a little bit like the gray bolster, so I wanted to uh, create a bit of a, a contrast. And the longer I have this, the darker that will get just from patina and my personal funk, and it will be... <laughs> It'll show even more of a, of a contrast. This thing is uh, every every new Jack Wolf knife that comes out. I'm like, oh, this is the one. This is the best. I I I I, I sense I'm sensing from what people are saying and from how people have responded to my unboxing of this that this is going to be a, a Jack Wolf knife that draws out a whole bunch of different people from across. Um, from across a wide range of knife users and collectors. Uh, I think this is going to be the one. <laughs> I say that each time. Uh, but man, this thing is this thing is really quite perfect. Uh, okay, let's move on. Now I uh, let's go to the the 10 great utility blades. Now they were this subject was inspired by this new Jack Wolf knife. And here, let me show you what I'm talking about with the 
I'll, I'll use the first one. This is the Concept Main Street. This is a great utility knife uh, because it's got great ergonomics. That's kind of a, a prerequisite. You can you can hold it for a long time without it uh, without having to overcommit in the handle to choils and grooves and stuff. And it's neutral enough that you can change your grip as you use this if you're using it for a long time, and you're going to find different places uh, for your hand to land in a comfortable manner to use this excellent blade that has a tip down towards the bottom. Now the tip down towards the bottom presents the tip for easy cuts like this, where you've got your finger down the blade like this. Uh, just think of a mat knife or a utility knife you might get from uh, Home Depot to cut out and score and to open boxes and whatever. You have this sort of presentation of the tip. And then for the draw, uh, for the push cutting, you have this long straight edge. In this case, it's 3.4 inches, I believe. Yeah, it's about a 3.4 inch blade and a straight edge. And when you hold it like this, again, it sort of presents, well, this one comes pretty, pretty straight off the knuckles, uh, but you can still trap that material in there for your push cut and get through it very nicely. Uh, so to me, that's what a utility knife is. Great with the pull, the draw cuts and the precision tip cutting, and also great for just kind of gripping in your hand and a hammer grip and powering through a bunch of material, rope, cardboard, whatever, whatever and what have you. Um, so this Main Street really is an awesome knife. This, uh, for a while, was my inside the waistband knife where I was uh, carrying this uh, in the waistband. You know how I how I do. Uh, I've had different folders take up that role. Um, famously, or I, I guess I used to talk a lot about it, was the pink broken skull. This took the place of that for a long while. Uh, it's nice and slender. It's got that nice burlap micarta um, and uh, a really nice clip, the sculpted clip. I'm not sure if it's titanium. I, I actually am not sure. Great standoffs. Interesting thing happened with this knife. Uh, oh, it's on bearings. Super smooth. A, a, a Dirk Pinkerton design. Dirk Pinkerton, a favorite designer of mine. Uh, this is one of the sort of emblematic designs or, or, or styles of design. He's got a number of knives that look a bit like this. Um, and it's just kind of his style. Great liner lock. Concept is is awesome. Uh, this is 154, I believe. And this is from the first run that was uh, mislabeled Little Main Street because this also comes in a small size called the Little Main Street. Yeah, 154 CM. Uh, interesting thing happened with this. I was about to say uh, I had a nice um, patina, if you will, uh, going on in this burlap micarta just from being next to my skin and then also from you know, just in how I carried it. And then also from use, because this one does get quite a bit of use. Um, and then one day we went to the pool and this was my pool knife. And this was last summer. And um, after I got out of the pool, I put it back in my pocket and the chlorine bleached out the um, patina in the micarta. That also recently happened with my preta too. So a word to the to the micarta lovers, if you like a patina on your micarta and you're going to the pool, you might not want to take your micarta knives. Uh, G10. Take G10. Why not? Or GRN. Uh, this is, uh, I was going to say one of my favorites here today, but they're all one of my favorites here today. So this is the concept. 124 cm Pinkerton designed um, Main Street. Highly recommend that. And it comes in a bunch of varieties a very good looking one is the is the deep purple g10 with black handle i mean that's that's gorgeous uh if if you like uh if you like 70s heavy metal or like prince uh that will resonate with you all right next up we've got the kubi vagrant this is such a great little knife and it comes in two different varieties two different blade shapes this uh, is the Warncliffe, and then they have a sheep's foot. Uh, this, obviously, looking at it, is a modified Warncliffe. It is not a straight edge. It is a, a continuous belly, but a pretty gentle belly. Um, nice point. I love the point on this, and that point is just below center line. So you can use it at, 
All right, I'm I'm going to say it uh, for for the utility thing. Uh, it's a, kind of a given that they utility knives do make very good self defense knives, and this little guy always makes me think of that. Uh, but that's not what this discussion is about. This is about the utility nature of it. And if you look at that blade, it is it is perfectly set up for that sort of um, that sort of draw cut with the tip, that sort of tip cut, I guess I'll call it, and a, a great spot there for your for your um, forefinger. But if you have to power power that tip because you can't power through material with your thumb there because your thumb will stop it from going through but if you have to put some power into the tip you've got a great spot there you've got really nice jimping um and by the way this is like 35 40 bucks very inexpensive and has a quite a number you got two different blade shapes and a million different colors i think this is this is awesome yeah, this is Aus 10. Um, a, a good blade steel, definitely for the money, this is a good blade steel. It's got a nice blasted uh, sort of finish on it. Um, blasted, tumbled finish. Great action with the with the middle finger flip. And that's left hand, people. Um, let's see. And let's see, how does the thumb work on this? I, I rarely use the thumb. You could slow roll it if you're in the uh, kitchen at the at the office or whatever. Great lock bar um I, I like the jimping on this lock bar i'm i'm very hot and cold about jimped lock bars i prefer sort of contoured gently scooped and just nicely placed but the the jimping on this is really good i don't like the jimping on civivi um, um lock bars but the kubi lock bars i do kubi makes excellent excellent knives uh like the way this one fits in the hand for a reverse grip and sometimes, you know, for utility, you do need to pound into something. Uh, I, I I don't recommend it because it's a folder. And if you do, I would recommend you turn it around this way so that uh, if the lock, if if it fails, the stop pin is still here and it most and it's not going to close on your fingers, um, you know, for that 55 gallon oil drum full of Uzis. This is designed by uh, Max Chichuk and uh, just a great knife. Deep carry pocket clip. Um, flathead screws but not recessed so half good <laughs> uh nice weight reduction so kubi kubi knives are like i said great this one with that with that gently bellied edge and that great tip is an excellent excellent option at three what is this three inches three and a quarter inches all right next up a classic but a great variation on a classic this is the delica but this is the delica Warncliff, and uh, mine is the serrated Delica Warncliff. So just about as awesome as you can get for both utility and, heaven forbid, self defense. Uh, I, those serrations are just make such short work of things like sisal rope, or um, I was just doing uh, putting new rope on the swing set out back, uh, which you should I kind of recommend actually. Uh, I, I only got one done. I got to do the other before the other daughter gets on it. But uh, yeah, the ropes do deteriorate. Um, but anyway, uh, this this just glides through rope like it's nothing. And that, that rope is nylon on the outside. It's cheap. It's cheap uh, kind of, uh, uh, what do you call it? It looks like climbing rope, but it's just stuff you get from Home Depot. And it's it's got this nasty nylon core. And this just shreds right through it. Uh, I love the serrate, the spidey serrations because I I do like that big scoop and then the two little scoops, and uh, the three points in a row that result from those scoops. So very good. Uh, most none of these have serrations, but this one is fully serrated as you can see, and man, you really really benefit from those serrations. But look at the tip; they give you a nice quarter inch run of just flat for those utility cuts again look at that you don't have to torque your wrist at all to present that tip to whatever you're cutting um you know with that tip or slashing open a box or whatever uh this one was a gift uh and and uh, i really 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 appreciate this um and uh what is the oh oh, oh what i wanted to say is that it came in um black 
the black GRN with the with the multi-directional texturing. A great handle, keeps it nice and light. But this knife is special to me, so I decided to get special handles. I got titanium. <clears throat> excuse me. I got titanium. Uh, but I gotta. I have to admit, and, and I do like the titanium. It gives it really nice weight. And uh, but I have to admit, I just saw Jared Neve uh, put some copper scales on his, and then he did this force patina. He calls a shipwreck patina, and you can tell he kind of coated it with something so that it. Oh my God, it looks beautiful. So I think I might have to do that to this. Uh, but you know, I have so many little ideas for knife projects that I'm not getting to. Uh, as I mentioned before, you have one of the sturdiest locks ever in the back lock here. And Spyderco does a great back lock. Awesome jimping in that thumb ramp uh, because you can you can use this for for all sorts of tasks like this. You're not just using this knife like this. And if you're holding it in a saber grip with your thumb pushed up against that um, that thumb ramp, man, it presents the the point at a great at a great position and that edge at a, a great angle to the knuckles and the hand to do things like cut rope, you know, say you're on a ship <laughs> and you need to cut rope. It presents it at a perfect angle. And also look at this, grab it like this, pull it towards you. Just a great knife. The, the Delica is a great knife. I love that they're worn cliffing, uh, their Delica and Della and Dora and, and ladybug and, and, um, all the others they've just given them all uh the warncliffe treatment and i think that's great because they they're all born into the the leaf blade shape so love to see that they're uh changing it up not only changing it up but giving uh, a, a meaningful variety in that straight edge with the point downward okay next up is the classic or modern classic qsp penguin um Got this a couple weeks ago and have used it a lot. Uh, this is one of those knives. Uh, you know, I'm sort of, uh, I can be sort of precious with my blades. This is one that I don't feel precious about at all. And those knives, sometimes the ones you don't feel precious about are the ones you end up bonding with the most because you use them the most, which is kind of ironic. Uh, but this has that denim micarta. And as I like to say, this is the kind of denim you see on overalls. You know, it's like a denim, it's like a work denim. Uh, like old school, like I, I see a, a, a train engineer wearing this denim, uh, really, uh, as opposed to um, this denim, which is more like on a on an attractive young woman kind of denim or something. This is, uh, well, an attractive young woman could be a train engineer, but probably they tend not to be. Um, but that's neither here nor there. I'm looking forward to seeing how this... Uh, takes on my patina because at first it seemed very resistant. I thought that the blue would start to darken quickly, but now I'm starting to see just as I'm viewing it uh, in the, in the camera here, I, I'm starting to see some darkening here, uh, but I, I find the denim micarta to just be a very appealing material. I love jeans. I've been wearing, I've been wearing jeans all my life, but I mean, I, I really go out of my way to wear jeans whenever I can. I can even dress them up. I can make them look good. I can make jeans look good. Uh, and, uh, you know, with a jacket and a skinny black tie and a white shirt, you know, and a look kind of like this. Uh, so denim, I love denim. Um, and here we have this, it's a mixed, it's a mixed sort of thing because it's not that bright, cheery blue, but it w looks like it's going to turn into a natural version of that thunderhead blue that we see right over here on the Q on the, um, on the Kubi. Uh, most importantly, though, uh, besides the ergonomics of this handle, which are very, very good, uh, they might be, a, it might seem a little small if you got giant uh, mitts. I do not. This is comfortable for me, um, comfortable enough for me, certainly because oftentimes you're using this knife in this position and kind of riding up uh, towards the Ricasso a little bit. But again, you got a great uh, angle of the edge to the hand. You've got an awesome uh, downward point, and this thing is just great for that kind of pull cutting. Uh, it's on washers, at least my version is. There are many, many versions of the QSP Penguin. That's another great part about this knife and all of these so far is that 
They come in many varieties. And this right here is a very inexpensive knife. I think I paid $30 for this on Amazon, I believe, $30. And, and when I picked it, you had options for it. Like you had a million different options for different handle materials, colors. Um, and then if you go to certain knife purveyors, you'll get exclusives. And what is it? Traditional pocket knives just released an exclusive version of this. And it's a titanium frame lock. I can't remember the steel. Maybe S35VN. I can't remember. Uh, but it's got a beautiful titanium frame lock handle that's fully jigged like a traditional pocket knife. And uh, and that's on bearings. So this knife, this very inexpensive knife uh, at its base, like this version, uh, because this is D2, by the way, uh, comes in many different uh, iterations uh, on a range of prices. So, I mean, if you, if you really love this design and want to spend uh, in, and want a premium version of it, it can be had. Great pocket clip, uh, easy easy lock bar. Um, I love this sort of rat two or rat one, uh, super smooth, uh, washer action. Didn't start super smooth, but hasn't taken long to smooth smoothen out. Is that a word? Smoothen? No, Bob, that's not a word. You just made that up. It's like clapter. Clapter is, uh, you know, it's like, Oh, <laughs> instead of laughing clapter, it's when you clap and say, Oh, that's funny. Uh, okay, so here, this is the Finch Holiday. I, it, it was a, a toss-up between this and the, um, what's that sodbustery one? And I'm not talking about the Chernobyl Ant. I'm talking about the older one that's got a sheep's foot blade with the downward angle. I really like that one, too. And Dag Nabbit, uh, for some reason, I can't think of the name of it. Uh, the Harvester. It was between this and the Harvester. But... The Harvester maybe is a better utility knife because of the angle. Aaron, I'm going to set this down here. If you look at the line that this sits on, the, the perfectly straight edge on this beautiful curved Warncliffe blade here is, or, or, or very sharp sheep's foot. I'm not sure what we're calling this. I'm calling it a Warncliffe. Uh, that very straight edge goes along the, the base of that very straight handle. It's all in line. When you have the Harvester, the angle radically drops from this line. So that might make it a better cutter, certainly in terms of um, how you hold your wrist. You, you don't have to turn your wrist at all and it will trap the material because it's got a, a somewhat radical downward angle by comparison. But the tip of this one is punctury. It's, 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 you, could, you can puncture really well with the tip of this and use the tip in a pull cut sort of way. So, so basically this has puncture over the harvester. The harvester, you can do that pull cuts with the tip and everything, and, and, and it's all presented at a great angle. But this one just has the added benefit of you could really puncture well with the, that tip. Also, to me, it's just fetching. It's just a beautiful knife. You've got, a, you've got steel bolsters, steel integral bolster liner set up here with... Um, in my case, the green micarta, but it comes in a number of handle materials. I believe each Finch knife comes out in three handle materials. Usually there's a micarta, something natural like wood, and frequently bone, which I love. Um, uh, funny, Vic. I can hear my brother laughing. Yeah. Uh, but right here, this is a, a, a glow-in-the-dark badge because they also, or, or Stephen, of... Uh, one of the partners involved in Finch, one of the two guys uh, in Finch Knife Company also has a Raven Watch Company. So this this glow-in-the-dark badge on all of their knives, which I absolutely love. Uh, some some Killjoys don't like it, but uh, <laughs> that, that's a tip of the hat to their, their interest in watches and to their watch venture. Uh, great jimping here. Awesome 154 CM blade with a with a beautiful horizontal sort of rub. Uh, great bolster lock. I'm a big fan of the bolster lock because you get the stoutness of a frame lock, but you don't have to worry about exerting pressure on the lock bar itself and, and uh, you know, hindering the um, explosiveness of the blade or anything like that when you're, when you're deploying it. This is such an awesome knife. This has been featured in so many different little uh, lineups 
for me. And one of them, uh, oh, by the way, Doc Holiday. That's why it's spelled with two L's. Doc Holiday. This is a, also a tip of the hat to Spencer, the guy who designed it, his father's love of the Old West and Doc Holiday as a historical figure. And it has a doctor's knife handle, totally square with parallel lines. And then on a traditional um, doctor's handle, this would be a solid piece of metal that you can use to crush up pills. And then uh, a traditional um, doctor's knife also has a little paddle that uh, comes out. Uh, the secondary tool to the knife is a paddle. So you, you can break up the cut the pill in half with the knife, break it up with the thing, stir it up into a potion with the little paddle. And um, so that's that's what this all is. But what I was going to say, in, in addition to oh, also nice titanium clip utility and all of that this would also make a pretty darn good self-defense knife in a pinch if you used it in that pick call grip and you know i'm always thinking that just because it's fun for me and because it taps into my areas of interest and in martial arts and that kind of thing so uh you don't have that in the harvester so the finch uh holiday i believe is is a better utility knife uh, than the harvester, not that you wanted me to argue this point, but that's because it's more versatile in its in in the fact that in the utility role you have a pun a, a puncturing tip, uh, and in you can swing it into a self defense role if need be. All right, okay. Next up, I, I this I would be remiss if I didn't bring up uh, off grid knives in this conversation. Off grid knives makes such awesome cardboard slayers as i like to call them uh but this one this is the cleaver v2 i believe of, of all of their knives um that i own and i own quite a few of them this is the best utility knife um because well through experience i guess i can say and it's probably one of i don't know i don't know i, I guess i don't want to rank order these but this would definitely be if i were to rank order these knives this would be at the in in the in the top three for sure this thing is incredible this is a d2 blade it's it's a pretty broad blade it's about an inch and a half at that very front peak and mostly flat ground not fully flat ground thin blade stock and then coated which is good because it's d2 coated with that black coating that this just slips through cardboard like it's not there. This is a really, really, really excellent cardboard knife. This is a really excellent utility knife. Now, I am not the biggest cleaver fan, as you know. Um, I like the way they look, but I tend to feel under knifed without a point. This one has all the benefits of a cleaver. You got that tall, uh, you got the, the tall broad grind all the way down the blade. Uh, and that is a benefit, especially when you're cutting through material and you're getting towards that tip. You still have all of that shearing power, um, but it's got a puncturing point. I know it doesn't, it's not as, uh, I, would, I was just making that point about the holiday. This is not as dramatic a puncturing point, but that really, really could work um, and, and does work for getting into stubborn, stubborn things. Um, I love the sort of look of the cleaver with the hole on the end, like a traditional kitchen meat cleaver that you would hang from that hole so i like that little tip of the hat to the i keep saying that today to to the uh <laughs> to the traditional cleaver um great action best tech made i love best tech knives uh really useful choil it's a big finger choil uh someone with fingers larger than mine could use that for sure um just a great utility knife and then all like all um v2 versions all, all the new versions of off-grid knives whether they're new designs or um, new versions of old designs the pocket clip is pocketed out and they use flathead screws so carrie orifice of off-grid knives their designer does listen and uh so great 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 utility knife and most of theirs are however this is the most utility of them all right next up a very inexpensive knife um that I love from Cold Steel is the Kiridashi. Excuse me, this one is in uh, 40, 30, 48, 34, 48 steel. I don't know. It's it's some cheap steel, but it's a great, 
It's a great little cutter. I love this thing. And it feels so good in hand. I also happen to think it's handsome. I think they should make a high-end version of this uh, with, with nice handle material um, and, you know, like a contour G10, smooth contour G10. And But these ergonomics and a nice blade steel. That blade is perfection. I love this thing. Again, perfect for those kind of cuts. Uh, a good cardboard cutter too. It's not the longest blade, and it does have a uh, when you when you grip it in that um, as it is a kiridashi. When you grip it in that hammer grip, as I've been doing, um, it does sort of reverse the angle I've been talking about all day. Where when you grip this, the angle if the edge angles down, it really traps that material when you're doing push cuts. So for something like this, you might end up using a saber grip uh, for cutting through cardboard and going through long lengths. You might go with more of a saber grip because it'll present that edge uh, at a more friendly angle. Um, this one gets used a lot. This one gets thrown in the pocket a lot when I'm when I'm working down the honeydew list this is a this is one that comes with me oftentimes it's got that funky little clip uh beckons back to the early days of uh cold steel and spider co when when the clips were integral to the to the grn handles this one's actually screwed on but it, same thing and uh it really does fill the hand nicely actually um i don't think it looks great but that's not so much what this is about uh, fills the hand great. Awesome utility knife. Very easy to sharpen that blade steel. Doesn't hold an edge for very long, but uh, very easy to sharpen and very wickedly sharp. Um, great angle that they sharpen the uh, the sharpened edge at. Sorry to end a sentence in a preposition, Dad. All right. <laughs> uh, next is the K Kaiser Tauser K. Kaiser Tauser K. It's a hard thing to say, uh, but it sounds better in a DJ voice. Um, this is the Cleaver slash Warren Cliffy blade that got me really excited from last year. I dragged my feet on it and they sold out. Uh, it came in both this Thunderhead blue rich light handle with engraving in it, or I'm sorry, milled, uh, milled out pattern that looks like the Boson Hicks field or or, or the, the, the armature that undergirds all uh, that you can see when you, when you go to Brazil and trip on ayahuasca or whatever. Um, and it's on inc super smooth bearings. It is definitely a, a guillotine. But the main thing, this blade is just so awesome. Um, for me, I really love the Sheepdog from Kaiser. I love the way it looks. I've never had one. And it's a lot about the tip. This takes care of the tip while still giving you a cleavery sort of blade, meaning you've got a full height. Uh, it's not full height, meaning all the way up to the spine, but the full height of the grind here is also here. So you've get, you get a, a nice even shearing power down that edge. And, uh, and that's kind of part, of, part and parcel of a, of a ut utility style, cleaver style blade. So you, you're, you're getting that benefit, but... This downward angle gives you a, a point. You get a point uh, that you can use. Curved, but gently so. Uh, a nice a bit of jimping here on the on the um, lower part of the tang here, so you can you can come up and use that as a uh, landing spot for your finger. Just a beautiful. Beautiful utility knife. Nice long run of jimping. Uh, also comes in a um, contoured red micarta. I believe it's a canvas micarta, or maybe uh, I can't remember if it's canvas or linen. Uh, it was hard to choose, but I had to get rich light. I've never had rich light before. It's kind of like a paper micarta, and I love that color. Uh, there is an exclusive now, I think, at Mojave Outdoors, uh, a, an online purveyor that specializes in Kaiser. As a matter of fact, I think that's the only knife brand they sell. And they do a bunch of exclusives and such. Uh, they have an exclusive of the Towser K now that's a black wash blade with black micarta. But it's a much it's a thinner blade stock, but the same profile. So it's it's even slicier than this knife is. And this is uh, this is way up there. Oh, and by the way, that's 154 cm blade steel on the guillotine blade here. Look at this. 
just this is probably the smooth definitely the smoothest knife here and maybe the smoothest knife in my collection it is just it just well just drops shut what can i say all right next up this one is a uh, very 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 popular model these days this is the 80 20.5 and um, this is the sheep's foot shark's foot blade and i always rag on it for being ugly because uh, it kind of is but man is it useful and that's all really men want to be is useful right even if you're stone cold ugly or you have no style or 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 you have an ugly personality generally people just men in particular i've noticed and and women too i, I don't mean to single out women but sometimes i'm just like i just want to feel useful you know yeah i'll i'll you know I'll, I'll do that stupid, lame, awful job because I'm not feeling useful right now. Well, that's kind of this knife uh, to me, just sort of socially awkward, but but very useful. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I don't know why why that design just. Um, but but I was compelled to buy it. Um, so it's like E.T. I always say it's like E.T. Kind of cute, kind of really ugly. And but man, this blade is awesome. It, it is such a good utility blade. Um, now that point is useful, but I'm certainly not gravitating towards this for the point. You can use that to get into stuff, but that's mostly because that edge right at the tip is very sharp and you can push that edge where it terminates in, but uh, less, less of a point, I would say. But you've got the great action of the, of the shark lock, of course, and really good ergonomics. You can come up and choke up into that choil there. And that's very comfortable. Now, I used this. Um, the first chore I ever did with this, this is an OS 10. And I was very like, oh, how's OS 10 going to be? It was uh, the day of my birthday last year. And we had a bunch of tiki torches. But the, the ground was really dry. And it was hard to push them in at the angle that, you know, they don't really give you a sharp angle. They kind of cut it off, but then it's blunt. So you have to continue it on the bottom of these bamboo tiki torches. So I carved points on a whole bunch of bamboo tiki torches with this um, with this OS 10 blade uh, as as guests as guests were about to arrive. And man, this thing did a great job with those with these kind of cuts. Like I really had to squeeze tight after a while and just power through it, you know, and uh, the handle is nice and ergonomic. It felt good in hand, even a little thin, you know, you wouldn't want to do that all day, but that blade just was so useful. So there is something that I love about that blade, but it's not the looks. <laughs> all right, last up. And then I do have an honorable mention because uh, I never would have placed it. Well, I'll talk about the honorable mention in a second. Last up here is my is the most luxurious of these. These range in luxury. Most of these are pretty inexpensive. The most expensive one here is the AD 20.5 or the Finch. But this, this is my uh, Hinderer uh, XM 18 Warncliffe. Now, I also have the 24 Warncliffe, which I carried this week. I used to carry all the time, haven't, haven't in a while. And just the Hinderer Warncliffe is perfect. It's the perfect Warncliffe to my eye. It is beautiful to look to look at. It has got a nice, nice acute point. It's got a great angle to handle. For uh, it's got a great edge to handle angle is what I'm trying to say. Um, would be great in a self defense situation if need be, but just outstanding as a utility knife where does it fall short it does have a bit of a thick grind uh but i had to mention it because i have used this with that edge that's a now albeit that's a jared neve edge so it's quite sharp for 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 the thick behind the edge measurement but i have used this thing to to just well just to dress out giant cardboard boxes like the uh like the big ikea boxes and break them down and it does work well now it does not slip through the material like this uh this is what i would use all day uh but this will certainly do as a luxurious version 
of all that we're talking about because you've got uh, mostly due to the profile and the shape of that blade. Uh, this is one that I've been considering getting reground into a hollow uh, from BGM. John Miller having him uh, just hollow it out and have it nice and thin. Uh, but I just haven't gotten around to it. I do like it and do like to have it around as a as a kind of a thicker, chunkier um, work knife for that situation that just hasn't ar arisen yet. Uh, that's These are my main 10. But I do want to show an honorable mention uh, before I sign off, and that is the Emerson Peace Arc. Uh, this is the police survival and rescue knife. And I was carrying this this week, and I actually ended up using it a lot on cardboard. And uh, it was great. It was great. It took a second to figure out how this tracks through the material. It is uneven with its chisel grind flat on this side and steeply beveled on that side. But it took about a second, and plus, I mostly used that tip where, where it's the least amount of a factor. So this thing did work great, uh, but I'm not going to put it in the running as a great utility knife. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me on the Knife Junkie podcast this week for my little uh, survey of 10 great utility folders. Uh, I happen to think that they all make excellent... Um, well, I, I like that they are extremely versatile. You might have something like this Bowie, which would make a great, you know, fighting knife or self-defense knife. But these do that as well as just are excellent at all sorts of around the house tasks. And that's really what we use our knives for anyway, isn't it? <clears throat> Coming up on Sunday on the Knife Junkie podcast, Colin Maison-Pierre of CM Knife Design. He's the guy uh, who teamed up with Lefty EDC to form Devo Knives. We have an awesome conversation and talk all about the Growler. This is a prototype from Shielden. It's a great conversation. Join us there. Also join us tomorrow night, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch for Thursday Night Knives. Also, you can download us and listen to us on the podcast apps. All right, for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.